Good late afternoon. I am William Theo, and this is PTV News Now. A month after both government and the insurgency expressed willingness to resume peace talks, the cool and quiet city of Malaybalay in landlocked Bukidnon province in the Mindanao mainland was jolted by a series of serious armed clashes between the government and insurgents. A military statement said the fighting broke out in four remote villages south of Malaybalay city on the kickoff of a two unilateral two-day truce declared by the Communist Party of the Philippines and its armed wing, the New People's Army. Authorities of the 4th Infantry Division headquartered in Patag, Cagayan de Oro said nine rebels lost their lives in the armed clashes, but it did not elaborate beyond the death count. The AFP stands pat on its decision not to engage in ceasefire talks with the rebels after years of lessons learned the hard way on the CPP NPA turning their backs on truce terms once a deal is clinched and sealed with a handshake. Meanwhile, the Kremlin is playing the blame on Western countries to include the United States over a protest marred elections in Serbia that has cast doubt on the integrity of the polls held December 17 after the ruling party of President Aleksandar Vucic's party declared it had a commanding lead during the count. While the Kremlin had welcomed the results of the local and parliamentary polls, groups of protesters and demonstrators rejected the ongoing count and even tried to storm into Belgrade City, hauled to the day before the no to no avail. Serbia and Russia historically had close ties with the former not joining the group of nations who sanctioned Moscow for its foray into Ukraine in late February 2021. Meanwhile, U.S. intelligence officials and pundits warn POTUS Joe Biden of serious blowback on American nationals the world over because of its clear preference for Israel and its hushed silence on the abuses and alleged war crimes committed by the IDF and Netanyahu government. VOA's Arash Arabasadi has the full report. Christmas Eve in Gaza. The Israeli military releases footage claiming to show snippets of what it described as intense operations in northern Gaza and to the south in Khan Yunus. Israel says its strikes target areas of Hamas infrastructure. Meanwhile, Palestinians in Khan Yunus gathered the bodies of their dead ahead of a funeral service following an overnight airstrike. Much of the world has for weeks been calling for extended breaks in fighting to deliver desperately needed aid to civilians living in Palestinian territories. U.S. President Joe Biden, wishing reporters a Merry Christmas, said he had a long talk with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Biden called the details private, but said he did not ask for a ceasefire. Meanwhile, in Tel Aviv, Netanyahu spoke at his weekly cabinet meeting. He confirmed the conversation with Biden, adding that Israel is a sovereign state with wartime considerations that would not be dictated by external pressures. The conflict in Gaza threatens to spill outside the Middle East, with U.S. officials warning of a spike in anti-American sentiment due to Washington's support of Israel. We're helping Israel deal with the destruction of Hamas, defending themselves after October the 7th. Jihadist groups all over the world are calling on their members to attack America as payback for us helping Israel. The Hamas-controlled Gaza Health Ministry says at least 20,000 Palestinians have died since the campaign against the group began following the October 7 attacks that killed 1,200 in Israel. U.S. officials say there is concern the country's support for Israel may bring blowback to the American homeland. The current conflict um, is causing, I think, contributing to a heightened threat environment. Um, what we are seeing is foreign terrorist organizations taking advantage and calling upon their adherents to act, to do something. And then we're seeing uh, individuals and, and small groups that we worry will basically take twisted inspiration from the conflict overseas and from the very searing images that we're seeing uh, that came out of the brutal, brutal terrorist attacks that occurred on October 7th. At a time when Christians celebrate Christmas, a mostly silent night creeps through one of the religion's most important cities.
The whole world is celebrating Christmas uh, this year, but not Bethlehem, not the birthplace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Bethlehem is celebrating Christmas with sadness and sorrow because of what's happening in Gaza and in all the West Bank, all Palestinian uh, territories. Bethlehem's churches this year framed the nativity theme depicting the birth of Jesus Christ in barbed wire and rubble, a show of solidarity with the people of Gaza. Officials here say tourism this year dropped from 2.3 million up to September to no tourists since. Arash Arabasadi, VOA News. This is William Theo urging you to stay informed, be aware, get ahead while you catch the news right here.